Hey everyone and welcome to today's tutorial where we are going to be talking about gobos within Octane for Blender. So I'm going to show you how to set up the gobos uh, within Octane. And uh, yeah, it's really quite simple. As you can see here on the right side, we have our node tree. And over here we have our just a simple scene with a, I just wanted to have like an object. I just chose like a, a statue and then we have the ground and the wall behind. Um, and if we go into the um, viewport here, you can see it's actually quite the same. So uh, I have already tweaked around with the settings for this layer. So as you can see here, yeah, we sort of have this window light kind of um, low, uh, low hanging window, just really uh, kind of uh, coming from the side into the uh, into our scene here uh, and actually not all the way up so it's more of like uh, imitating like a sunrise or a sunset uh, light in um, in the windows so yeah so so this is the um, the setup and uh, yeah let's just do one from scratch so I'm just going to hide this light here just so we have our uh, simple scene here and then I'm going to be adding an Octane Area Light because this is the type of light that we're going to use uh, to cast our, uh, yeah, Gobo. And I'm just gonna uh, drag this one up. And then I'm going into the um, shader editor here. And normally, instead of the texture remission node, uh, I'm actually going to change this node to another node called the Black Body Emission. And the reason for this is you can use both, but I normally stick with the black body emission because it gives more control compared to the texture emission. For example, you can set the texture strength here, which uh, determines like the efficiency of uh, the light. So if it's set to 100, it means that, or it's set to one, it means that uh, the light is 100% efficient to deliver its light which is never the case. So I always try to keep this one down a bit. And then uh, uh, we also have the temperature here, which means that we can um, choose an, an, a temperature that is real life. So for example, if uh, 65 here or like a normal, uh, I think daylight temperature is around like uh, 50 years, um, 56, uh, uh, 1,100, uh, and yeah, you can also have a one on the lower part of like 3,200 or, yeah, it just gives a lot of uh, flexibility com compared to this node over here. So I'm going to delete the texture emission and then we will add our black body emission here. And as you can see, nothing really changes. And I'm just going to dial down our texture environment so we're going to take this one down a bit, just so it's easier to see what kind of effects that is happening in our scene. So you can see if I crank this one up, uh, we will get our top light here, because as we oops to 1000 here, and let's just set this one to uh, way better efficiency. Uh, we can go down to light. This I think will be fine. And now you can see we have like a nice top light. And if I go out to this one, you can see yeah, we have our top light here. So we can dial this one up here. So we need to be adding something to this light that will uh, yeah, imitate the, the gobos. And uh, you can find a lot of gobos online. Um, it's basically just a black and white image of like a tree or window, for example. Uh, I have bought the gobos um, light texture from uh, uh, let's see here from it, uh, yeah, the Kobo light textures, and uh, it's just uh, from the Blender market, and you can also find this one if you want. And then I'm just going to choose Windows, and let's pick just for this case here. Let's just pick this one here. So you need to be plugging this into the right part of this node here. So right now nothing happens, but if we take our texture and we put this into the distribution something starts to show up here. And as you can see, if we dial up our light here, you should start to see behind that now we actually start to see uh, a kind of gobo effect 
happening. Let me just put it up to a thousand. Um, and for this node here, um, you can see it acts kind of weird here. The first thing that we can do is we can add a node called the projection uh, perspective projection node here, and it will uh, project the light depending on uh, our object. So as you can see here, now we um, have this kind of window effect uh, depending on our our scene here. And I want to take the light down a bit here, but if we go into the view here, you can see now it starts to look quite interesting with the with the with the things that we have going on. Another thing that we can do is we can raise this one up a bit. Is we can scale down this light here, and what's happening is. Um, I don't know why this is the case, but the smaller the light is, you know, we get a stronger line in our gobos. And if we scale it up, you can see it all smooth out, plus we get more bright light. So you need to scale down your light quite a bit, just like this. And we can pull it up. And now you can see if we, we can drag it out to the side here. And uh, we can rotate it inwards a bit. And uh, yeah, now you can start to see that we actually, uh, whoops, let us go to the top view and let us rotate it just like this. So now it's like coming from um, above and also hitting the wall down here um, or over here. Um, we can choose to, for example, uh, under our, um, uh, yeah, our properties here. We can choose to exclude this light here. So we can, for example, do this. So we only have like a window, a, a top light hitting down just on the center of our plane here. And as you can see, this is the case. Um, so we can, you know, move this one around here, just like this. And now I can see it starts to look quite nice. Um, of course, we would have something to hit the wall, so it's not that realistic, but it's just to show you all of the possibilities that you have with uh, when creating gobos. Uh, we can also go into the shader editor here, and we can, for example, do a UV transform. And now we can start to like scale our gobo, so we can create like, uh, you know, a more square, you know, larger squares and make the squares more like a rect uh, rectangular and yeah just like you can play around with the scale of each of the f uh, sides of your gobo um, but yeah so now it's a bit underexposed so we can jump into our view to see what our exposure needs to be and um, we can bump this one up and one of the things that I normally do is I go into the uh, the color uh, management and I'll pick the false color and now you can see that we have a false color view uh, of our scene so you can see the red path is where it's more uh, exposed and the more closer we get to like bluish and grayish and dark and black colors we will lose a lot of our power and um, so I think we can crank this one up just to get a strong uh, window light here key light and um, you can see we can block out our light, uh, whoops, our, um, our background light here. So if you go into the, you can see now we get really like a, a quite dramatic kind of view on our scene here. We can crank this one up a bit more, I think, like this. So now you can see you start to get quite interesting shapes and we can do all sorts of like really interesting light gobo effects and the reason why we choose to use gobos in the first place is because they are just more realistic. Uh, you know, when you see an image, um, like taking an image, it's almost the light almost always comes like through a window or it hits uh, branches and you know trees on the way uh, towards your object. So unless you're in like a control studio, um, it's a good idea to experiment with these kind of different gobos because they will um, add, you know, um, um, more realism to your scene. Um, we can dial this one up a bit again just to uh, get a more brighter image here. 
But now you can see we have this sort of like really cool scene here. I think it can be even more bright here. So as you can see here, we have this cool window light uh, from top hitting our ground and you can do all sorts of things. So, you know, there's, I have done another scene where it was more like, uh, oops, like this here, where we um, sort of like see more of the, uh, of the, of the sculpture here, but in, you can just play around like, um, in any way you you sort of want to with these gobos and experiment a lot with how they uh, act in your scene. So I think this is pretty cool for now. And uh, yeah, so you can, of course, make it hit the wall. You can, you know, rotate and, you know, do all sorts of things. But the important th thing to remember is to keep the uh, light small and then, uh, and then play around with the... Uh, with the power and the black body emission and then also remember to, to play around with like the 3d transformation and the uh, perspective projection over here uh, that will help you uh, get the most realistic uh, go pose so yeah this is all for now and uh, yeah hope you uh, learned a few tricks on lighting in this one and uh, yeah see you for the next one bye